Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Masterworks. My name is Jason Meyer. Happy to be here with you tonight. Hope you guys are well. I know in our area, a little bit of heat. So, Susan, I hope you survived okay, staying hydrated. Yeah, it looks a little ha ha breathy. So, well, we're glad you're able to make it. Hopefully, you've got a nice, cool place to watch from. Hopefully, you got a cool place to watch from. So tonight, Miss Shakti, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. I think you're going to like this one. Tonight, I thought we would talk about the planes of the face. Um, this morning in class, all month long, we're talking about mixing color and how to mix color and the kinds of colors we need to mix. <clears throat> and this morning, we talked a little bit about making color runs, why we make them, where they go, and all of that. So I want to put all that together this evening in our masterworks and let's look at some problems we are facing in our portrait. Now we are just mixing, but um, we will be painting this next month. So let's uh, see what we've got, what problems that we have, and then how uh, Rembrandt and David handled some of those problems. All right, let's see. Miss Cindy's in the house, so we are going to be okay, I think. We're going to be okay. If not, we're going to have a good time anyway. Cindy's got a good time. Hey, Miss Claudia. Hope you're well. We've got coastal. We've got inland. We've got everything here tonight. All right, well, let's jump over to Procreate and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. A little do -si do here. Let's get that up on screen. There we go. Let's see if I can set yours truly right over here a little bit out of the way. So this is our beautiful reference photo of the beautiful Miss Ellie. And we're going to talk a lot about the main masses right and the main masses before we get started on the planes of the face it's going to be our head our neck right and then our torso all right your neck's going to fit into the rib cage right but we want all the gestures and everything of that but as we do that, what's the language? What's the language we're going to use? What do we need to talk about that form? Well, we're going to need shadow. We're going to need light. We're going to need some air. And we're going to need some highlight. Okay, there's our four, right? Highlight. Light. Air. And shadow or dark. Okay, so how are we going to talk about that with those four things? <clears throat> what if we say that anything facing this way is light? Okay? And then as we turn around and under We're going to go into shadow. But shadow is going to be planes that go this way. Lights are planes that go this way. Well, what about planes that go this way? 
How about air? Okay, so what we're going to look at today on these masterworks is how they show us this journey across the face. Okay, because we've got to show them around like that, and we've got to show them around like this, right? Form is 360 degrees. Even if we simplify it, this goes around this way, but it also goes around that way. All right, so let's come back to little Miss Ellie. Miss L. And let's look at a Rembrandt. Now, is this face doing the same thing Yeah, so how is he showing us this? He's doing a better job than me. What, what happened there? <laughs> Somebody went off the road. But let's start with similar planes. So did we talk about the side planes? So right, do you guys see how all of those planes are similar? And those are all in shadow and also the under planes. So this morning in our lesson, we talked about how there's no single color. A color by itself doesn't really exist. We need multiple colors, right? And then I ended with the thought of a advancing color coming towards us and a receding color going away from us advancing towards us receding away from us advancing towards us receding away advancing towards receding advancing towards receding does that make sense And then here we have planes facing us. And then the shadow planes are the planes facing away in this direction and under. Okay, so you see all the shadow, the cast shadow, Right? And then what about the planes going back? What well, are we going to call that air?
So there's the shadow side of the face. Now too many people are too often going, ha, it's not flat. I see. I see that's different and that's different. There's some difference in there. It's not flat. Look, that's not exactly the same. Settle down. Are all of those changes much, much, much smaller than the change from here to here and here? Yes, remember, painters don't see more, they see less. Quit trying to look for more. Start trying to simplify. Simplify, simplify, simplify. So right now we're talk, looking about how these guys, these artists, separated planes going back versus planes going back. versus planes facing us, planes facing us, planes facing us. I hope, are you guys starting to see how that reads a little bit? Rembrandt's pretty subtle. Rembrandt's pretty subtle, but this is that logic he used. Now, I don't know if he used these words, whatever, but you can see it. You can see it. All right, let's look at some other examples. Let's come back to Rembrandt. Let's come back to Rembrandt. Let's look at David because it's a little more obvious here. A little more, a lot more obvious here. But what's the situation? Do we got something going back? And then we're going across? And then we're going up? We're going across, we fall off, we go across. So, How do we know those are all facing that way? Because they're all similar, right? Don't be seeing this difference and this difference and this difference before you see this difference. That's a much bigger difference than any of this. The difference between these colors and values is like millimeters. This difference is like half a mile. Right, so the big stuff goes first and then the little stuff. So look how different our shadow is from our light. Shouldn't you be seeing that first? Isn't that a much greater difference than any of the little differences we have within the light? And then look, it's like he's got stuff going through heavy air 
or weaker air. Right? Do you see what he's done there? He's divided more planes. He's actually right. So we're going here, and then we're turning around. Right? We're going here, and we're turning around. We're going here, and then we're turning around. Well, not only is there this corner, but then there's another corner right here between the upward facing things and the downward facing things. Now again, I don't get too complicated in this, but I wanted to show you within this very simple four value language, like how complex it can get. Now, what have we not seen? We've seen shadow. We've seen air. We've seen light. What about our highlight? Would that be our fourth? So where do these highlights occur? Do the highlights occur between the light and the shadow? Between the light and the shadow? No. Now, not that it can never happen there with cast shadows and different things. It can happen sometimes. But for the most part, it's going to be on the corner of air and light. On the corner of air and light on the corner of air and light on the corner of light and air do you see how the highlights are used to mark the corners Now, down here, it's used for something else, isn't it? So I'm not saying everywhere you see white, there's necessarily a corner, but just so happens there is a corner right here between the mustache facing up and turning under with the lip. see that all right one other thing I wanted to show you why you guys are here so that's the basic language <clears throat> of the four values let's talk about the center of the face okay I'd like to propose to you That right there, maybe there. I'm going to propose to you that those are the sharpest edges with the biggest value differences in the whole painting. And is that on top of or separated from the brightest bright? Right? Or highlight. You see that? Look at that. Boom. So with those two things, look at where we're going to focus. So let me ask you something. If this is one edge and this is another edge, 
What are you doing? He's making you focus in the middle, which does what? It makes this have form or look like it's round. Uh, you're welcome, Shakti. You're welcome. I, I hope this was the air, shadow, light thing. But whatever it was, that's good. Okay, does everybody follow on that? Can you see? All right, can you see how the combination of that edge? Well, what do you mean that's the hardest edge? Well... Compare that to that. Well, okay. Compare it to that. Well, okay. Right, it's all relative. What do you think that nose pops off that face? Darker, richer, lighter, grayer, maybe? Did you guys see this cast shadow? He actually brought that in. Instead of letting it go. Are you noticing those things? Why do you think he does that stuff? I bet he does it because that's an effective way to pull this further away from there. Rather than just going with the lights coming this way so the shadow goes like this. Right? He's just not following what he... But there's a visual language here. Why do you think that looks so deep? Well, what do you mean it looks deep? Well, yeah, it looks deep to me. How? How, how, how? Are your dark shapes that interesting? Do your dark shapes show this much movement? So Claudia says, I love the way he puts the paint down and walks away. Yeah, he manipulates it a little bit, but he lets the paint be paint. Let's the paint be paint. Okay. Uh, we're running out of time here. We're going, oof. It's just so exciting. So this was a demo that I saw. And I want to look at this and I want to go back to Ellie, to our reference. 
So, does he have the structure of the face? Is this direction different than that direction? Different than that direction. Yep. So this is that direction shadow. 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 Shadow is also the underneath plane. Right? So look, we've got one big shadow here. You see the shadow? And then a shadow isolated over there. Now we don't have a lot of time, but even on a little demo, I'd like you to go into your studio and outline one of your dark shapes. Right? Because I've been saying dark shapes, dark shapes, dark shapes, dark shapes, dark shapes. But I get this. Okay? And also, part of the reason this is so effective is because of the simplicity of that. This goes in. It goes way in, comes out, and then back down, and around, and then to, all that does is take power away from that shape. Okay, so to see the interconnectedness of all this, and how one thing affects everything else, is what it means to be a painter. Now, Let's talk about one other thing here. So those are the values. <clears throat> what other pattern do you see? White. Break. White. Break white break white did you see that very simple pattern before or were you too interested and looking at all these little bitty changes and temperature changes and this and that. You've got to train yourself to see big and simply first. Because tell me about all those little changes right now. You don't see any of those little changes. Yet this is still a million dollar painting. Anybody see that and that? Did you see that this whole thing was held in by our parentheses? And that we could say one Rest two. Okay, I carried this painting in my very hands. Carried it upstairs from where he did the Rimo to the workshop room. And you see that one little streak of paint right there? Well, before I was carried it upstairs, 
this thing right here was actually just dangling like literally hanging off you can see where it fell and snapped right there that right there is just about stain of the canvas what a journey from stain of the canvas to thicker stain to flatter paint to oh my god there's floating stuff hanging off like icicles And even by seeing part of this, I wonder why this is so dynamic. I was there. This guy just sat there. He wasn't spinning around in his chair a million miles an hour. He was sitting as still as could be. He was a great model. But how still is that paint? Again, this was a demonstration in front of a live audience. I, I forget, an hour and a half, two hours, maybe. What does air look like? And is there more air because this is going back sharper and less air because this is not going back as sharp? Oh my good God. Are you kidding me? No, it's for real. And is that completely different from a flat shadow? Yeah. Look at that insane shape. Okay, I know we've seen these before, but again, as we get our color in, I, I want you to see how that color works. Is that, does that look number three to you? Does that look in between? Yeah, when you compare that to that, that seems like achievement, doesn't it? Doesn't this seem like achievement? And do we got pinnacle here? White highlight, pinnacle. We've got the foundation of it all. We're going in between. We're going to reach some achievement to the pinnacle of our career. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what we got going on here. I know we're just a couple of minutes over time, but. When we're working from our reference, this beautiful young woman right here has exactly the same thing happening on her face that Rembrandt's subjects and David's subjects had happening on their face. So, do you understand the language of planes and corners to tell us about all that? But also to tell us in a way that makes an interesting painting. Okay, we're going to finish up here in just the next five minutes. I apologize for running over. Sometimes it takes a little while. So just a sneak peek, if we're to look at our light shape, how could we get a little bit more out of it? Well, could you see this thrusting this way? So that thrusting that, could that neck thrust this way, right? And then look at that head. 
right up and around and then the face is turning around this way and what's happening the eyes are looking back that way guys how much more action do you need look at all that action in there look at that action all right but it's going to be up to you to put our code together to make that beautiful paint sing all right let's see what we got let me come up for air here boom 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 735 so i'm a few minutes over apologize i hope it was worth it let's see there we go all right you're very welcome susan says thank you good evening all right claudia thank you everybody again again i hope it's starting to make more and more and more sense as we have our lessons masterwork sketching and mixing by the end of the summer guys if you can stay with me boom you're going to see a huge jump in your abilities but you have to participate all right love you all thank you for spending your time with me and uh We'll see you guys again very, very soon. All right, let's see. Super duper fabulous. Thanks, Shakti. All right, I'll be back tomorrow morning and Wednesday morning for Morning Jump Start, which we're going to be mixing along. If you want some color mixing practice, we'll have 30 minutes tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Until then, I'm going to get a little rest. I hope you get rested up as well. And we will see you guys in the morning. Good night, everybody.